In this video, we'll go over the icons and options on CorelDRAW's standard toolbar. The toolbar I'll be showing is specific to the Windows version of CorelDRAW Graphics Suite. CorelDRAW Standard and Essentials also have this toolbar, but with slightly fewer tools. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. By default, the standard toolbar runs across the top of the Corel Draw interface, just below the menu bar. If you don't see this toolbar, right click anywhere in any other toolbar and choose Standard. The Window Toolbars menu is another place where you can toggle toolbars on and off. If you want this toolbar or any other toolbar to appear in a different spot, you can right click in a toolbar and toggle off Lock Toolbars. You can then grab the toolbar by its left edge and place it anywhere, drag an edge to resize it, or drag it back to any edge to dock it in place. To keep toolbars from moving, right click again in a toolbar and toggle Lock Toolbars back on. If you want to change the size of icons on this toolbar, right click in the standard toolbar and choose Customize. With default button size, you can change the icon size throughout all toolbars, or you can do this just for the standard toolbar. I'll use the largest size for my icons to make them easy to see for the rest of the tutorial. Now let's look at each option in this toolbar. As in most other applications, the first icon is New, which starts a new CorelDRAW file. Next comes Open, and clicking the drop-down arrow for this tool opens a list of recent files you can choose to open again. The familiar Save icon is next, which is only enabled after you make a change in your file. CorelDRAW files are saved in CDR format. Keyboard shortcuts can be seen when hovering over an icon and are generally pretty standard for common tools. For example, we have Ctrl N for New and Ctrl S for Save. The next two icons are Open from Cloud and Save to Cloud. Every user of CorelDRAW Graphics Suite 2019 and later can access CorelDRAW.app with their Corel account credentials and store files in their cloud account. For users with a CorelDRAW Graphics Suite subscription, there are also exclusive collaborative features such as live comments. Another familiar icon is Print, which opens a multi-tab window with numerous print options. The next set of icons are Cut, Copy, and Paste, with the familiar shortcuts of Ctrl X, Ctrl C, and Ctrl V. If I draw an object and keep it selected, Copy saves the object to the clipboard, Cut removes it while keeping it in the clipboard, and Paste brings it back in. Undo and Redo are next, with shortcuts of Ctrl Z and Ctrl Shift Z. I can click Undo repeatedly to go back one step at a time, or use the drop down to return to a specific step. Redo works the same way. Import, or Control i is for bringing other files into your drawing, and you can click the All File Formats list to see what can be imported. For example, I'll filter the list to show PNG files, find the one I want, and click Import. The prompt tells me what I need to do to get the image into the drawing, and I'll drag corner to corner. Export, or Control e is used for saving your Corel Draw file or selected objects to a format other than CDR. I'll click the Save as Type dropdown to see the extensive list of available formats, and the available options depend on the selected format. Publish to PDF is used just for PDF export and has a wealth of settings. If you want to learn more, you can view our full tutorial on Publishing to PDF. Next comes Zoom Levels. If I use my mouse wheel to zoom in or out, I can see the zoom percentage update, or I can enter an exact value. The full screen preview icon displays the contents of my drawing in full screen mode with no toolbars or menus. I can end full screen mode by pressing any key or clicking a mouse button. The next three icons control the display of reference elements. Rulers appear along the top and left edges, in the current units, which can be set in the property bar. Show Grid turns on the default document grid, whose properties I can change by right-clicking on a ruler and choosing Grid Setup. In Document Grid, I can change the spacing of grid lines, 
switch to grid dots, and toggle snap to grid. We'll look at snaps a bit farther on. The last reference display option is guidelines. These can be added from the guidelines docker, which I can turn on by choosing window, dockers, guidelines, or they can be added by dragging from a ruler into the desktop. I'll bring in a horizontal guideline and a vertical guideline, and clicking Show Guidelines toggles their display. If the Snap Off icon is enabled, then no snaps will be working, and no tooltips appear while my cursor is moving around. If I want to use snaps, I'll toggle off this icon, or press Alt-Q, then I can use the Snap To menu to choose the snaps I want. When snaps are on, the cursor identifies and moves to the exact location of certain objects, such as a grid point, edge, node, midpoint, etc., and I can use these points for drawing or moving. The Options icon is used for setting several types of options. In Corel Draw Options, I can define how several features in the UI will work, like snapping, text, warnings, and more. Customization options affect how the UI will look, and Tools options control tool defaults. For example, I can open Rectangle and choose Default Corners and their radii. Global options control system-related options, such as file locations and formats, and privacy settings. And in Workspace options, I can choose from different workspaces. The default workspace is active, but if I switch to Light and set as Current, I'll have a smaller set of displayed tools to work with. I can also create my own customized workspaces that contain the tools I use most often. Finally, we have the Launch menu, which launches other Corel applications, such as Corel Capture or Corel Photo Paint. The Get More option opens the store in the Welcome screen, where I can filter the list by applications and see what else I might want to add. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the standard toolbar in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial.